Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here. Now pasta is one of those pantry staples that most of us can't live without. But are you overwhelmed when you're in the grocery store or the specialty store between all of the different varieties that are out there? Well, today I'm gonna to share with you the difference between grocery store brands of pasta and artisanal brands, which you should pick up and why in a really simple recipe that I love. Now in front of me here, I have two different types of pasta, the grocery store and the artisanal. Now you probably have started to see in your supermarket, the artisanal pasta is kind of showing up on the shelf, but they're a little bit more expensive. Sometimes they're a lot, <laughs> they're pretty expensive. And you might be wondering, why should I buy this versus what I'm used to in the grocery store? So let's start with the grocery store. Now, as you can see, and you're probably used to this, a very shiny pasta, this nice kind of darker brown golden color. And this is how the pasta is made. Now, dried pastas are typically extruded through discs or dyes, they're called. So here in the test kitchen, we have an at-home pasta extruder, and these are the little dyes that come with it. Now, this is probably similar to what is used in manufacturing of the grocery store varieties because it's a plastic. Now, usually Teflon dyes are used in grocery store pasta making, um, and what that does is that Teflon, that shiny surface, it gives a really shiny and smooth texture to your pasta. Now this you would think maybe that is desirable, but it's actually not because the chalky or rough texture of the artisanal pastas, which are extruded through bronze dyes, help the starch from the pasta release into the sauce. And also this rough texture helps the sauce cling on to the pasta itself. Now. In addition to the differences in um, kind of how the pasta is extruded, grocery store pastas are usually dried at a faster rate. So common manufacturing these days is done in two to five hours at a high, high temperature of like 185 degrees. So the pasta dries really quickly and the enzymes in the pasta, in the flour, what happens is they start to um, brown the proteins, which gives this darker color to the pasta, as opposed to the artisanal pastas here, which are dried slowly and at a lower temperature. And what it does is it maintains the nice color of the pasta. And some people even say that it helps to maintain the flavor of the pasta. Now, most dried pastas out there in the market are made from wheat and more specifically, and usually more commonly in the artisanal pastas are made with durum wheat. Now, durum wheat is a hard wheat. It's the second most um, cultivated wheat around the world, but it actually only makes up a tiny percentage of, of the wheat that is cultivated. It's about like five to 8%. Now, durum wheat can be ground in many different ways. And typically for artisanal pastas, it is called durum semolina flour. And semolina is a coarser grind of the durum wheat. It's all kind of technical and complicated, but it's good information for you guys to have is a coarser grind, which gives a better texture to the pasta. So this again is one of the differences between the artisanal pasta and the grocery store. Now, today I'm gonna to share with you one of my favorite recipes. It's a really fast, easy recipe to do at home and it's called cacio e pepe. And that actually means cheese and pepper. It's really simple. It's kind of like the uh, Italian or Roman version of our macaroni and cheese here, and it's really simple to make. In front of me here, I have a giant pot of boiling water. Now you guys, you wanna make sure that when you're cooking dried pastas that you use about 10 times the amount of water by weight to the pasta that you're using. So here I have a pot with about like eight to 10 quarts of water, and to this I'm gonna add a really hefty pinch of salt. Now, whenever you're making pasta, you want to season the water. You want to make it nice and salty because the salt is going to impart and bring out the flavors in the pasta. So give a generous pinch to your pot. Now, once our pot of water comes back up to a boil, I'm going to add in my pasta. And today I'm using one of my favorite shapes and that is bucatini. Now, bucatini, you might think it looks like a thick version of spaghetti, but actually what it is, is it's extruded through a very similar dye. It's actually, I have it right here. Um, but what's really interesting is that it has a hole in the center of the pasta, which is really fun and different. So I'm gonna break this open for you and maybe you'll be able to see inside this little microscopic hole here. 
and this will become much more noticeable when you cook the pasta because the size is going to increase by about two times. So now you want to make sure after adding the salt that your pot comes back up to a boil and now it's time to add the pasta. One thing that you should do to help prevent the pasta from sticking to each other is in the first few minutes of cooking, give the pasta a stir. Keep stirring it around. And the reason why pasta sticks together within the first few minutes of cooking is because the outside starch of the pasta becomes saturated with water and those saturated starch granules start to bond with each other. So if you don't stir this around, you're gonna get big clumps um, of pasta. So stir, stir, stir. And then we're gonna cook this pasta until it's a nice al dente. And that is an Italian term for to the tooth, making sure that there's a little bite to the pasta before draining the pasta. And what you're looking for is slight underdone center. So the outside will be pretty much cooked, but the inside will still have a little bit of tooth to it. And for this bucatini, it's gonna take about eight minutes. But if you're using a different pasta shape, which you certainly could for this recipe, just look at the package and see what the instructions say and kind of cut the timing short by about two minutes. So I'm gonna let this cook. And now it's time to finish the pasta dish. So in a very large skillet, this is a 14 inch skillet. I'm going to add a half a stick or four tablespoons of unsalted butter. And you wanna use a good quality butter here, guys. So if you can find any of those European style butters that have a higher butter fat percentage, I would encourage you to use that here. Now I have a little bit of reserved pasta water, which has all of that wonderful starch. You can see the water has a bit of a milky, um, quality to it. It's kind of opaque and that's all of the wonderful starch that's going to create a really delicious, rich um, and viscous sauce. So I'm going to add about a half a cup, maybe a little bit less to the butter here. Stir this around and now I'm going to add two teaspoons of ground, coarsely ground black pepper. And I've toasted my black pepper a little bit in a pan to really intensify the flavor and the spiciness of the peppercorns. Now, Cacio e pepe, again, guys, it means cheese and pepper. So this is a very flavorful dish. So just give this a stir in your pot. Now we're going to add our pasta. And the reason, you guys, why I'm using a really wide, shallow pan here is so that I'm not disturbing and tossing the pasta too much where I'm breaking the pasta apart into pieces. You wanna be able to kind of slide and swirl the pasta around in the sauce. And now I'm going to add the first of two cheeses. So this is three ounces of Grana Padano cheese, and that's about a cup finely grated. And you wanna make sure when you are grating your cheese for this dish that you use not the box grater, but one of those fine graters, those, those microplanes or um, wood rasp graters that gives a really fine powdery grate to the cheese because you want this cheese to melt evenly and you don't want it to break. Now I'm gonna just gently toss this around until the cheese melts. Again, you don't want to use high heat here. I have like the lowest setting, uh, lowest heat setting here. Add a little bit more pasta water just to give a nice velvety sauce. You can see how creamy and luscious it's starting to be right now. Once this Grana Padano melts, I'm going to turn the heat off and I'm going to add in my Pecorino Romano. And this is three quarters of an ounce, which is about a quarter of a cup finely, finely grated. And Pecorino Romano is very salty, you guys. So you might not even need salt in this dish um, because it is such an aged cheese. It's a low moisture cheese. So it has a concentrated flavor and also a concentrated amount of sodium or salinity to it. So this looks fantastic. I wish you guys were here because really to smell this dish, it's so fantastic with all of those cheeses and the pepper adds a wonderful flavor. Now I'm gonna serve myself up a little bowl here. Give a little drizzle of olive oil, this is totally optional. And you can give a grate or two of freshly ground pepper just to top it off. 
maybe a little extra cheese if you had it. Now, remember, when you're in your grocery store and you see all of those wonderful pastas up on the shelf, look for an artisanal brand that is cut using bronze dyes and something that is slowly dried. And I think when you try this, you're going to include artisanal pastas in your pantry for everyday use. Now, if you have any kitchen conundrums, please let us know. We always love hearing from you. Enjoy, guys. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.